but first, perhaps the question is why should Neurath have thought that monetary calculation is is so handicapped that it can't actually, you know, subserve substantive economic rationality? And uh, Neurath's answer would be, well, just just look at just look at what what this formal rationality involves. It requires a commensurating measure. It requires a demand for universal intersubstitutivity, all the things that, you know, calculation and kind is meant to, to come over. And uh, once, once you have that, uh, and of course with a market, well then, of course, you have the profit motive ruling the roost. So it rules the roost to the detriment of substantial rationality. Now to this, of course, one might say, well, look, you can build in side constraints and blah and blah and blah kind of stuff. But Norad would show that uh, would 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 argue that any any of these side constraints or whatever we want to call them they're, they're purely ad hoc and lack all systematicity. And he at that point he would he would perhaps or he could count to his own ecological incommensurability argument, which he which he developed against capitalism or deployed against capitalism already in 18, 19, 18, 19, 19, 19 Put in contemporary terms, the problem of taking account of economic account of sustainability considerations and environmental damage, etc., is that of bringing externalities into the market, of putting prices on damages that previously do not figure in the cost-benefit calculations of the producers and distributors, etc., etc. So the idea is then that once a principle like polluter pays is in place, the market itself will take care of avoiding the previously neglecting damages, or to speak with Cup now, the social costs. <laughs> they, they, you know, the polluter carries the social costs, not the environment. But Neurad pointed out that this is not so because there exists no objective basis on which one could ground the exter- such externality charges to polluters, future generations, and he. That's a typical example of Neurath when he talked about, you know, shall we use all the coal we need now or shall we keep something for future generations? Well, future generations will lack from certain, you know, in his case, lack of carbon resources. How, do, how, how are we to account for this future demand? Should it be, even if we can anticipate it numerically, should it be reckoned in full or should it be discounted somewhat? Well, you know, it's, it's, it, it, nor I would say it's utterly arbitrary. And the arbitrary of deciding, quote unquote, the discount rate makes a mockery of this ideal of formal rationality, namely to be precise and determinate and give a definite answer to any decision that has to be made in, in a given market situation. So, and in, in, in that sense, he obviously goes against all the people who talk about shadow pricing and that, that kind of thing. And on that point, actually, he totally agreed with Mises. He didn't agree with Mises on a lot of points, but, but Mises also would have thought, if you don't have a market, don't try to imagine one that, that it, it doesn't work. On the other hand, Mises totally neglected the kind of environmental issues that Nora talked about when Mises talked about, you know, the beauty of a waterfall. He was talking about, you know, the tourist income. He, was, <laughs> he wasn't talking about the, you know, ecological dimensions, right? 